What up, nerds? I'm Jay Sharif, and once again, I'm talking about action cams. This is the Sony X3000. For years, it has reigned supreme as the king of cameras for travel vlogging. And you might notice that it looks completely different from every other action camera. Every other action camera company follows the GoPro formula. Basically, a rectangular box with a lens on one side and a touchscreen at the back. They're all basically the same shape. But Sony went a different way. Sony decided that their action cameras should look like mini camcorders. However, they weren't the first ones to do that. You see, the Sony X3000 has a daddy, and chances are you've never heard of it. And here it is. It's called the Olympus TG Tracker. Now, don't want to exaggerate too much here. The Olympus and Sony both came out in 2016, and the Olympus was definitely first. I bought this five years ago when it first launched, and I bought it because I absolutely loved the styling, the specs, and the overall concept. However, I have to admit, I never got a lot of use out of it, and in the end, I was disappointed with it. It's so close to being the perfect vlogging camera, but it falls short in some key areas. Anyway, today I'm taking another trip down memory lane as I compare these two devices, and, as usual, I'll focus on three things. Video quality, audio quality, and usability. Before we head outside to test them properly, let's do a quick tail of the tape. Both of these cameras weigh under 200 grams, but the Sony is significantly lighter. That's no surprise, however, because the Olympus is a very rugged and waterproof device. It's part of the Olympus Tough series of cameras that are supposed to be waterproof, freeze-proof, drop-proof, and crush-proof. So, all that extra protection means it weighs 65 grams more than the Sony. Now, the Sony is supposed to be an action camera, but it's only splash-proof, so it can probably cope with a little bit of rain, but it does feel very fragile. Both of these cameras shoot video at 4K 30p, which suits me perfectly, and both cameras have image stabilisation. However, they're stabilising the video in very different ways. They both take photos at 8.3 megapixels, but in terms of sensor size, the Olympus is bigger. And as a general rule, bigger is better, especially when the lights are off. Giggity! The Olympus also has a wider aperture, so the Olympus is definitely going to be better in low-light situations, especially because it has an inbuilt torch just above the lens. However, there are some ways in which I do prefer the Sony, which I'll get to when we're testing them outside. Both cameras have a screen so that you can see what you're filming. However, the one on the Olympus flips out from the side of the camera, whereas the screen for the Sony is on the live view remote. This is a separate accessory that you can wear as a wristwatch or attach to a specially designed tripod. So, that's the basics. Time now to head outside to give them a test in the real world. In many ways, I prefer this mini camcorder style when using these as vlogging cameras, but I'm pretty sure that for extreme sports scenarios, mounting these is a lot more awkward than the traditional GoPro-style cameras. So, I'm not surprised that extreme sports enthusiasts generally prefer to use GoPros. These two devices are actually much more popular as vlogging cameras, and the reasons for that are obvious. They shoot in 4K, they have wide-angle lenses, they stabilise your video, they've got decent sound, and you can easily mount them to a tripod or monopod, which is exactly what I've just done. And, as you can probably see, both of these cameras have a fixed focus. For the Olympus, everything from 20 centimetres to infinity will be in focus. And for the Sony, everything 50 centimetres onwards will be in focus. Normally, such short focusing distances would be very welcome. However, as they're both ultra-wide angle cameras, putting them that close to anything leads to major distortion. Uh, the closer I bring them towards me, the more distorted my face looks. 
and that's inevitable when you have a wide angle lens. The X3000 has a ridiculous 170 degrees of coverage when filming in 4K. And as you know, I hate ultra wide angle video. Well, the Olympus is even wider. Olympus has put the words extreme angle on the side of the camera and that's no exaggeration. The TG Tracker has a field of view that's 204 degrees, which is absolutely ludicrous and gives a very ugly fisheye look to your videos. However, there is a partial solution to that problem. And the image you're looking at right now is a lot narrower than 204 degrees. The Olympus has an option called underwater mode. And when you switch that on, it automatically narrows the field of view. It goes from 204 degrees to about 170 degrees, which is basically the same as the Sony. And a lot of Olympus owners, myself included, switch the camera to underwater mode and just leave it that way. That's not the end of the story, however. You could actually make the field of view even narrower by turning on the inbuilt image stabilization. That will give you a view that's 126 degrees wide. Even then, the video looks a bit ugly because it's still a fisheye lens. So, what I normally do is de-warp the fisheye when I edit the video. And this is how it looks when you de-warp the video. It's reasonably easy to do this in most modern editing programs, but it can be a major pain for your computer processor. It will overheat, the fan will go like crazy, especially if you have an old computer like mine. So that's the video. Now let's talk about the audio. This is what it sounds like using the inbuilt microphones on the Sony. And one of the reasons the Sony has been so popular is the quality of these two stereo microphones on the front of the camera. It's genuinely astonishing how good the audio sounds straight out of this camera. There is also a microphone jack on the back of the Sony X3000. Now, I've heard a few reviewers say they've had issues with the sound once they've plugged in microphones. That's not been my experience. I've plugged in a microphone and the sound has been great. But, in all honesty, you don't need to plug in a microphone because the internal mics are brilliant. Now, the sound on the Olympus isn't nearly as good, but as I've discussed on this channel before, you cannot expect the microphones in a rugged, waterproof camera to perform miracles. Having said that, I still think they do a reasonable job on the Olympus. And you can still hear what I've got to say, which is the most important thing. Right, it's now time for a stabilisation test. And for once, I'm not going for a run. Instead, you don't want to see that. Instead, I'm going to mount these cameras to my mountain bike and go for a ride. to say that this surprised me. I was expecting the Sony stabilization to be far superior. After all, that's one of the reasons the X3000 became so popular, the legendary stabilization. However, comparing the footage side by side, I think the electronic stabilization of the Olympus is actually better than the optical stabilization of the Sony. The Sony X3000 has Balanced Optical Steady Shot, BOSS, which is basically the same optical stabilization built into some of Sony's larger camcorders. It's a physical stabilization system, and inside the camera, the lens and sensor will move to counteract any shakes and jitters. In contrast, the Olympus has electronic image stabilization, so basically the computer inside the camera uses gyroscopic data to create a more stabilised video output. And to my eyes, the Olympus seemed to do a better job. Right, so this is a low light test. It's about, it's about 11 o'clock. 
I'm standing directly under a street light. I'm thinking the Saudi's not doing particularly well, although you should be able to hear me very clearly. But how is the Olympus doing? And the Olympus also has a party piece that might change things. There we go. Whoa, that's great. That's great. That's harsh on the eyes, but uh, it does mean you can see me, albeit now I can't see anything else because that is horrendous. <laughs> so not great for vlogging, but if you're out and about at night filming other things, uh, then this probably works well as a kind of torch pointing at whatever you need to see. And finally, it's time to talk about usability. Neither of these cameras has a touch screen, so changing settings can be a bit annoying. However, the Sony has this ancient LED screen that's quite hard to see. I struggle to use it in bright conditions and in low light conditions too. Whereas the Olympus has a beautiful, colourful, backlit screen. So changing settings is really easy and you can even use it to review the video footage you've taken with this camera. It's also worth noting that the Olympus TG Tracker can record a lot of data to go with your videos. So, it can record GPS coordinates as well as your speed and elevation. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but the Olympus can also record the temperature and barometric pressure. It also has a built-in compass and apparently if you use the Olympus app, you can overlay all of that data onto your videos. I have never ever done that. In fact, I keep all of those functions turned off because they will burn through your battery very, very quickly. But those options are all there to bolster the rugged wilderness credentials of the Olympus TG Tracker. Now, the Sony obviously doesn't have any of that and it's clearly not a viable action camera unless you put it in a special housing. Whereas the Olympus is rugged straight out of the box. It's waterproof down to 30 meters, which is huge. It's freeze proof down to minus 10 degrees. It's dust proof, of course. It can withstand a drop of more than two meters. And the camera is crush proof up to 100 kilograms. So this camera is a beast. But that does lead me to one major inconvenience. You'll notice that the Olympus has a flip out screen and at first this looks like it's perfect for vlogging. You point the camera at yourself, flip out of the screen and you can see what you're filming. Except you can't. Because the camera was built to be rugged and the screen can only face one direction. It doesn't articulate. So when you're behind the camera it works really, really well. You can see exactly what's being filmed. But <laughs> if you turn the camera around and point it at yourself, the screen is still pointing backwards and you have no idea what's actually being recorded. And it's obvious why they designed it this way. You can't really have a cheap and rugged waterproof camera with an articulating screen because the articulating part would not be waterproof. So, this is a disappointment. Obviously, if you're a vlogger, you'd prefer the flip-out screen was facing forward. But, let's be honest, both of these cameras have such wide-angle lenses, you just need to point them at yourself and you can almost guarantee that you'll be in the frame. And, as it happens, the Sony does have a useful little screen and you can use that screen to see what you're filming. You have to pay extra for it and Sony call it the Live View Remote. It's a useful little device that you can wear on your wrist. Alternatively, you can attach it to a specialist Sony tripod. And by specialist, I mean expensive because this is Sony we're talking about. They love to squeeze the consumer as much as they can. Now, I've never really bothered with the Live View Remote, partly because the wide angle lens on the X3000 means I can be confident it's capturing what I want it to capture, but also because the two devices are connected wirelessly and that reduces the battery life by quite a lot. And recording time is more important to me in the grand scheme of things. 
By the way, it's worth noting that the X3000 and the remote are not waterproof. They might survive a bit of light rain, but personally, I wouldn't risk it. So, let's recap. In terms of image quality, I'm confident in saying that the Sony looked better to me. That's a surprise considering the X3000 has a smaller sensor and a smaller aperture, but it's also worth noting that in low light situations, the Sony is pretty useless. Olympus will do better in darker environments and the built-in torch can be helpful too. One other factor worth considering, however, is the way the wide-angle video looks. I personally hate fisheye video, so the native video coming out of the Olympus looks quite ugly to me. However, the Sony doesn't have the same fisheye distortion, and that's because the lens on the Sony is rectilinear, which basically means it's designed to reduce barrel distortion. So I definitely prefer the Sony for video quality. In terms of audio quality, once again, the Sony is the winner, and I don't think any action camera does a better job of capturing audio than uh, the Sony X3000. Now, the Olympus isn't terrible, it just can't compete with the Sony. However, when it comes to usability, the Olympus is a clear winner. It can survive some very extreme conditions, it has some interesting data capture options, it's much easier to use, and the built-in screen is really very convenient in many ways. It's just a shame that it flips out the wrong way. The Sony does seem like a dinosaur in comparison. But which one would I choose if I could only pick one of them? The answer to that is going to surprise you, and it certainly surprised me too, because normally I would choose the rugged and waterproof option, and in previous videos, I've done exactly that. I said that I would choose a DJI Osmo Action over the Sony X3000. However, the DJI camera has really good video, really good audio, and excellent stabilization. It can match and even surpass the X3000 in many ways. You couldn't really say the same about the Olympus TG Tracker. The X3000 has better video, better audio, and better stabilization, or at least similar stabilization. So, I would choose the Sony over the Olympus. But having said that, I'm actually planning to sell the Sony, and I will be keeping the Olympus. I'm going to keep the Olympus because it's a historic curiosity. It's rare. They don't make these anymore and it's a unique piece of technology. I could keep the Sony too, but I don't really need it. If I want to vlog, I have better cameras than this, including the DJI Osmo Action, and the DJI is much more suited to extreme situations. So, if I ever went swimming, or snorkeling, or mountain biking, I'd never choose the Sony. I'd grab my GoPro or DJI camera. And if I'm making high quality videos, then I would use my mirrorless camera because they can produce much sharper video and superior audio too. So, the unlikely conclusion, the Sony X3000 is great, I absolutely love it, but I'm getting rid of it anyway because I have no need for it whatsoever. Valuable consumer advice as usual. Thanks for watching, I'll be back with another video very soon. Later nerds!